you to this Frantix webinar. I'm Viola Pinci, member of the project at Europea Schoolnet, and today with me there is my colleague Adina Nisto with the Scientix account. She will provide technical support during the session. Please write to her in the chat if you encounter any technical problem during the webinar. I also kindly remind you to turn off your camera and your microphones during the session. Our speaker today is Francisco Perez, Scientix ambassador for Spain, and he will talk about open source hardware. The presentation will last about 40 minutes, and at the end we will have time for questions and answers. And now I leave the stage to Francisco. Welcome, and thank you for being here with us today. Okay, I thank you again everybody for being here, attending this webinar. I hope that uh, this webinar will be a little bit yes, useful for you. Uh, I will try to speak about this topic open source hardware, uh, how to use in, uh, in a classroom to foster creativity in your students. So this is the contents of my, my webinar. First, I will speak about uh, creativity and the way we are trying to teach our students. Then I will try to, uh, have a, to give a definition of what is open source hardware. I will give some examples of uh, platforms that we can use uh, this type of hardware, and I will give a, a specific example with a, a specific platform that is very well known, that is Arduino, and we will uh, give an example about a blinking LED, that is uh, the, the very simple uh, Hello World type of program, the first program that you learn when you start programming uh, an open hardware is a blink is to blink a LED, uh, an L I L E D, that is this uh, electronic light. And then uh, another uh, more complex example with an analog input and analog output. And then how to create uh, an Arduino, an Arduino, uh, an Arduino uh, hardware. And then some examples with processing libraries with computer vision, augmented reality, or voice recognition. So why uh, we are teaching, why you learn program, computer programming, and why learn uh, open hardware? Because according to some experts, we are preparing students for jobs that don't ex yet exist using technologies that haven't been invented in order to solve problems we don't even know our problems yet. So coding and programming is a good way for problem solving and for developing skills, high order skills for our students. So I think, uh, in my opinion, we are in, in, a, in, a, in an era of the internet, of the setabyte, with a lots and lots of information, and we can try to find, in, uh, we can use internet, of course, uh, to help us to find problems, interesting problems for our students to be, in sol to be solved, and uh, the, the point is to find uh, different solutions at, for the students to find different solutions. And uh, finding different solutions, we can use this open hardware. And this is a good way to develop a skill and competences for the students. But first, we need to have these competences, the teachers, and also the politicians need to change the syllabus that in many countries they are, they are introducing in the syllabus uh, this sort of a skill and competence related, related with uh, these technologies of, of open source, both not only software but also hardware, and this is a good way to uh, work with students in hands-on activities. So we have different sorts of problems and we can have uh, we can have physical models. We can transform these physical models. For example, here we have a model of the atmosphere, for instance, and we can transform this model into mathematical equations. And then we can transform these uh, mathematical equations into an alg algorithms. And we can 
transform these algorithms in, a, in computer programs, and this is a way that we are very uh, used to work, uh, but we are using only software. But the point is that we can use, of course, open hardware to develop devices, not only to develop the software, but also the accompanying device, the physical device. Because now uh, I have heard a lot of times that we have a very good uh, uh, skillful students with new technologies, but my, in my opinion, the students are uh, passive technology users, and they don't only know uh, to, they know how to use technology only to as passive uh, citizens, and we need to try to uh, have very creative citizens, and uh, we are centering our efforts only in remembering, understanding, and applying. But we, we, in my opinion, we must try to introduce creativity and open hardware is an opportunity to do it. So we can have, we have uh, many software that I call this software all software, that is computers, mobiles, to program uh, new devices, new open hardware devices, and to create new things. Uh, the objective, in my opinion, in, in schools is to try to, uh, to speak not only uh, the native language or, or not only English or other languages, other local languages, but speak programming languages, because speaking programming languages allow us to create things and to create prototypes. Uh, if you know how to program using some platforms, some electronic platforms, you can try to uh, create things. You can try to use uh, or to reuse materials to create things from these uh, previous materials. But what is open source hardware? If we understand the software as, as a physical artifact, uh, create and design and offer by the open design movement that here um, that uh, also is known as free and open source hardware. And in education, I think we must try to use as much as possible. We have some problems sometimes with the license because this is the license that usually uh, we can use in software. But in hardware, we have all the problems some problems some noise I, we have some problems related with uh, with patents not only with copyright but with patents and we have we we try to we must try to have uh, a hacker attitude in our students so we try to, uh, to find uh, the right problems for our students to be solved and uh, to have uh, these problems and to use this open software to, uh, to, uh, to solve it. For example, an interesting one is this one that is the Genuino 101, that is the name, that will be the name uh, when it will be available next year. Uh, this is uh, of the Arduino branch. It will be called Arduino in the, U in the United States, but uh, in, the, in the Europe, it will, the name will be Genuino 101, and will be uh, um, uh, a software that will, will explain a hardware story with accelerometer and with Bluetooth and with 32 bits microprocessor and very interesting to work with. And uh, we will have now available the Raspberry Pi 2 with uh, HDMI, that is, this is not a, a microcontroller platform like this one, it's more a computer, but you have also different inputs and outputs where you can put uh, analog inputs, analog outputs, digital inputs and digital outputs of different sorts 
and you can control this all connected to an Arduino platform or, or other platforms to have more memory. Here you have an Intel Edison. This is very interesting because it's created by Intel and is compatible with Arduino and similar uh, electronic boards. And you can have uh, the different type of uh, inputs and outputs. Here you have a comparison. You have the classic Arduino Uno that has only uh, eight bits uh, chip and other ones with more uh, capabilities, with more bits, with more memory, with more inputs and outputs. For example, as I explained before, uh, with the accelerometer, the Bluetooth, the Gino Uno 101, and the price, uh, you see that it's increasing, but the possibilities are also increasing as well. And the memories, and the possibility to be connected to, to the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth or a screen or an SD card, and the sort of programming languages could be very different. Uh, this is the more common ones from Arduino to processing or uh, Python, 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 sorry, in the Raspberry Pi too or a specific uh, programming languages from Intel. Uh, here you have more possibilities from Microsoft or from Beagle Bone is very well known, or little bits that works with magnetic, uh, uh, magnetic structures that make easier to connect things. That is probably uh, a good uh, thing for primary school, little bits or you have more uh, sensors for the Raspberry Pi, like the Growth Pi plus sensors that you can, uh, that are prepared to uh, just to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Also you have, for example, uh, next year will be available also in 2016, one million computers. This uh, is, will be mainly for the UK but you can buy from outside the UK in, in starting in January or next year. And you have this micro bit that will be very interesting because it will be, because it will be a very big community of uh, teachers around the UK because the UK is transforming the uh, syllabus and introducing computer programming from six year old students till 18 year old students using this platform, Microbit. And uh, it will be very interesting when it uh, will be starting next year. So Arduino One, uh, you can uh, buy one, you can create your own. It's very cheap, it's very easy available. It's an open source uh, software and hardware. And uh, there are many open uh, projects available and many shields available to connect other things. You can see here the structure. You have five analog inputs here. Uh, with uh, There are uh, 10 uh, bits analog inputs. That means you have a signal from 0 to 1023. And here you have some uh, digital inputs and outputs that some of them, you can see this signal, uh, for example, in number uh, 9, 10, and 11, and this uh, symbol means that it's a PWM. That means that it's not exactly a digital input or output, but uh, uh, analog input. That means that you have the possibility to have an analog output from 0 to 200 and uh, 2025, that means an 8 bits uh, digital, uh, no sorry, analog output. So you have analog outputs here, you can see number 9, 10, 11, number 5, 6 is also, because it's this symbol, that means a pulse width modulation symbol, and also number uh, 3, 5, or see, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 had this possibility of analog output. So 
Here you have a lot of possibilities of analog output with these numbers that I told you, and analog inputs in these numbers that I told you, that they are in the bottom part, analog inputs. So you have uh, also this brain that is an 80 mega con microcontroller, and you can program everything connecting from uh, to the computer for your, from the, using the US, USB plug, or and when you uh, con, uh, when you program this uh, Arduino, it can work with an external power supply without being connected with the USB. And you can connect everything you want in sensors, in the in this uh, analog inputs. I and mean, in this digital output, you can connect uh, electronic lights, you can connect uh, motors, engines, whatever you want to, con to connect as an output. Uh, here, here you can some uh, some uh, possibilities of different types of Arduino, some Arduino boards. You have some of them that uh, have capabilities of Ethernet, Ethernet connection or SD card connection or some are uh, connected to Android, uh, like this Arduino Mega that is compatible with uh, Android, or this Lily Pad that is a uh, wearable that you can put uh, in your uh, in your clothes uh, because it's a wearable uh, device, a wearable hardware device. And if you want to build an Arduino board, there are very interesting tutorials on the internet. The only thing that you need to know is the pin mapping of the of the core of the microprocessor, that is an 80 mega. And then, if you know uh, the different uh, the different pin the, this pin mapping, you can connect the uh, the microcontroller to a, a breadboard, and with only several uh, resistor and capacitor. And a, and a crystal oscillator and a converter to, uh, to you can have an, uh, um, uh, a board like this one uh, that is similar to uh, your Arduino original one. And you can buy all these components for less than five euros. Here you have a video tutorial. Where, where where you can follow to build with these components, with these simple components, how to build uh, this uh, Arduino board. Then you can use the software, the Arduino software. Uh, to uh, the Arduino software is uh, also open. You can download it, and you have available for Windows, for a Mac uh, operating system, or for Linux. And uh, after download it, uh, you can use. It's a very uh, simplified uh, syntax, and it's easy to learn and very powerful. And you, you have a lot of example codes inside the software, and you can download uh, examples from the internet. And there are many libraries available to create things. This is the simple code. If you know a little bit of programming, you must know the, what is a Hello World uh, software, Hello World, Hello World uh, program, and the, the equivalent of the Hello World of the, in, in the open software is the blinking. The blinking to make a electronic light switch on and off is a way to understand how to program and how to uh, start and check that your hardware works, you open hardware works. In this case, the only thing that you need to do is to uh, declare the pin mode and the number 13 as an output, because it could be also an input. You say here that the pin 13 is an output, and you connect to the 13, as is, you can see in the next slide, you connect to the 13 and ground uh, this electronic light LED, and when you connect the LED and you send this code, the, uh, the, uh, the Arduino blinks on and off the LED for one second. Here you can see that the instruction is very simple. Here you have the setup. The setup indicates uh, the settings, that is, the Arduino board must be uh, the number 15 as an output, and the loop 
is the code that is looping, as the name indicates, that is repeating again and again, and you uh, switch on the light, that is digital right 13 high, means set the LED on, and the LED, this is the number, 1000 is the number of milliseconds that the LED will, will be on, and then you declare that uh, with this instruction to load, to stop uh, the, uh, the light, and uh, you, uh, with this instruction delay, you stop for one second. And uh, the only thing that you need to connect here the, uh, the electronic light. If you want to make and to share, I recommend this uh, this experiment to uh, to um, for students to understand what is a sensor. The, the cheaper one is the LDR, the light dependent resistor, and also an RGB that um, that is a red, green, and blue light. Uh, so if you have a uh, an LDR you can use as an analog input, and you have uh, an, uh, this light with red, green, and blue capability that you can use as an output, as an analog output. And it's very easy. The only components that you need is that ones. And if you have a resistor, the, la uh, the, uh, the light-dependent resistor and the uh, L ED, you can quickly understand what is a sensor, what is an analog sensor, and what is uh, an, analog, an analog input, that is a sensor, and what is an analog output, that is this light that you can switch on a little bit more of red, green, and blue light. And uh, here you have uh, the, what I told uh, you about uh, the analog output, the analog output is not real, it's not a real analog output, it's a pulse width modulation that means that you can have values from 0 to 255 because it's an 8 bit uh, analog output. Do you remember that uh, when I speak about the structure of the Arduino, you can give signals to give different intensities different intensities of light in the, in the electronic light. So you have this capability of switching more intensity the light or less intensity the light. So because this pulse is very quick and we can observe not this pulse but this average voltage. So the light we observe this, uh, uh, this voltage average and not this pulse. So this is why it's very interesting that you can have this capability of uh, observe this analog output of the light. And here you have an example of how to, if you give more intensity, if you connect to the, from the Arduino to the uh, RGB LID, just this, this resistor and to the pins number nine, 10 and 11 because they have this pulse width modulation that have this capability to have more intensity or have different intensities of lights, you can do a lot of different, uh, in this example, uh, you can do a lot of different uh, colors because if I give more intensity to number nine and number nine, if you follow number nine is connected to imagine the red color and number 10 to the green color, and number 11 to the blue color of this light, you can have, if you put the maximum intensity that is high, that is 255, you remember that you speak from zero to 255, means that you can able, you have the possibility of give more or less intensity to this, uh, to this light. And you can control with very simple instructions this, uh, this light. And you can have different colors. If you turn on number nine, you are turning uh, red color. If you are turning number 11, you are uh, low, you are turning off the blue color. 
and you can have different mixtures of colors. Imagine here we are only doing high and low. That means low being zero and high mean 255. That is the maximum level of these uh, pins, 9, 10, and 11. So you can have different intensity, not only high and low. You have also different possibilities that we will see in the next example. And here you can have, remember that I told that analog input comes from zero to 100 to 1023, that you have a 10 bits analog input, the sensor, the LDR, the light dependent resistor. And here you have uh, the connection of the LDR and the connection to the, uh, to the RGB uh, electronic light. So depending on the level of light that we have in the LDR sensor, the sensor of light, this is a sensor of light that you have in the upper part, it's a sensor of light, and in the bottom part you have the different colors of the light with the, tre with the three resistors. The three resistors reduce, reduces the intensity that gives red light, green light, and blue light. And you can control with programming uh, the color of, of, the, of this uh, electronic light depending on the level of this uh, sensor of light, of this LDR, that is the light-dependent resistor. And here you have the structure. And here you have the code. The code is very straightforward because the only thing that you need is to define where the name of the variables and the pins where the variables are connected. In this case, in this case, uh, in to pin number nine, ten, and eleven, because these pins are analog outputs, goes from zero to two hundred fifty-five, and the LDR you connect to one because one is an analog. Uh, input, that is the light dependent resistor, the sensor of light. And then uh, when you connect this, you declare that some are uh, outputs and some are inputs. And then in the next slide, the only thing that you need to do is to uh, read the values of the, of the LDR. And if the value of the LDR is between, uh, in this case, uh, the maximum is 255, it's not possible to 1,023, sorry. Is this the maximum? You can give different colors, and here in the next slide, you can see, hopefully, that uh, if the values is between uh, two the, uh, values, the sensor, you give different colors. You have different colors depending on the, or what is sensing the uh, LDR. If the values is, for example, in this case, between 900, uh, 959 and less than 1,023, the LED, red, the, uh, the light that is red is in the maximum. But depending on the values that you have sensing with the uh, sensor of light, you have different intensities of light. So in the different uh, pins, in the different red, remember that LED red is pin number 9, 10, and 11, and you have different intensities. You see that put, I put zero, that is no intensity, 255, that is the maximum intensity, and 128, that is a medium intensity. So depending that we are sensing, we are observing different colors. Here, you, if you go to this website, to my website, you can see a video to look how uh, you can see, depending on the intensity that you're receiving the sensor of light, you have different colors in the electronic light. But this is just to show to the students the possibilities on analog input and analog output, and to um, start working with simple um, codes. But the point, in my opinion, is to try to work with uh, more powerful uh, 
uh, programming languages. That is, for example, in my case, I choose processing. Processing is a very powerful uh, programming language that is compatible with the Arduino. You only need to send Firmata firmware to the Arduino, and you can start programming with processing libraries. Very interesting experiments to be done with processing libraries and Arduino. Next slide. You have some examples of libraries to be in use. For example, you have Lego robots. You can use uh, with Lego robots. Uh, you can use processing or can use uh, App Inventor as well. Uh, you don't want to use processing. App Inventor is also compatible with Lego, with Lego robots. You can use to uh, op, uh, object loader library. You can use NIATLA augmented reality for processing for augmented reality. You can use open computer vision library for computer vision. You can use a lot of different things to be used at the same time. So, because uh, if you have the processing uh, installed in your computer, you can use uh, processing to program what you want in the electronic board. For example, in this example that you can see in my website, you can see uh, this example of frame recognition. In this example, uh, we use uh, the, uh, the library that is open CD library that is of processing. And in this example, you have some codes to recognize faces. And the only thing, and also to recognize the position of the faces. So you can uh, easily transform this code or this example code to a code by adding the Arduino. For example, if you detect three, uh, three faces, that it will be switched on three lights. Or, and at the same time, you can add the text to a speech library. And at the same time, uh, you can say, there are three people on the screen, there are three people on the screen, or there are two, two people on the screen, or there is one people on the screen, and also the position of this person on the screen. If there is one person on the screen, you can see the X and the Y position. And you can create games or whatever you want with the face recognition uh, because it's compatible. The only thing is that you need to have all the computer, the computer connect to the Arduino to use the camera of the computer and to use uh, the processing software that you can use in the Arduino. Another possibility is to use augmented reality. You can use, for example, a marker. And when you show a marker, you can have uh, 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 an object in 3D and at the same time switching on a LED. This is a possibility of switching on and off uh, devices with markers, with augmented reality markers. And, and you can have uh, this is just an example to show that it is possible to mix all these libraries of augmented reality, Arduino, uh, text-to-speech, whatever you want. Uh, also, voice recognition. Um, so, in this case of pollutants, you can um, buy some, uh, some uh, sensors in China or in different websites, sensors of CO2, of methane, of different pollutants, or temperature, or humidity, and it's very easy to program and uh, to send uh, values to the mobile and uh, to use the mobile, for example, asking to the mobile for the levels of, uh, the, um, of the pollutants, and you can see this video where you, you can uh, try to, uh, to uh, know the levels of pollutants, for example, in your car. We make some me measure, measures of pollution in the cars, and the only thing that you need to do is to transform these uh, sensors that you have 
that is MQ sensors, is called MQ sensors, into uh, using Bluetooth to send to your mobile, and you can uh, uh, store this data in your server and to use also location on to represent in graph in your mobile. Here you have the structure, and you have uh, here in my website, and uh, you can ask uh, what you want at the end. You have this MQ sensor of uh, gases, or this one that is bigger is of CO2 that needs an external uh, battery to work. Uh, and if you connect all the sensors to Arduino, you can measure pollution, for example. And here you have some, uh, some uh, data recorded by our students. They uh, bring the, uh, the Arduino with the sensor to their home, and they measure with old cars or new cars the levels of pollutants in their cars. And it's very interesting to see that how new cars pollute less than, new, uh, than old cars. And also with uh, motorcycles, with uh, motorbikes, and depending on the, if, the, if the, uh, you have an engine that is diesel or is petrol engine, that also, uh, as you know, the diesel, the diesel uh, pollutes more than the petrol engine. And, uh, and uh, it's very interesting also to know that uh, uh, to create things uh, connecting to the internet. You have very sh a lot of chills that have ethernet connection or Bluetooth connection to the mobile, and it's not very difficult to connect to the Bluetooth uh, to, the, to the internet. And next year, with the appearance of Gino Inu, 101, uh, it will be easier to uh, work with the Bluetooth. But it's not that difficult to, uh, to set up the, the Bluetooth. And uh, you can imagine of applications with related with domotics, or you can create your more creative uh, solutions. And there are many websites where you can send uh, your uh, data from your sensor of your Arduino. There are many websites that you can uh, connect your, uh, your Arduino. And, and now we are work, working with uh, trying to create in a smart drones with face recognition and other abilities. Uh, and uh, we can discuss uh, afterwards these possibilities. Um, but the, the idea behind is to your processing and processing uh, languages and also Raspberry Pi that uh, from uh, two weeks ago uh, has libraries that are compatible. This was an announcement in the Raspberry Pi uh, homepage and also in the processing uh, homepage concerning this compatibility between Arduino and processing that gives you the possibility of programming uh, using Raspberry Pi and Arduino in an easy way and to be compatible easily, uh, more easy, easily, uh, processing and Raspberry Pi and Arduino if you need. Now I am also working relating with arts. We are trying to create things. Um, with all our country in an Erasmus Plus project. And, uh, the idea is to create wearables with uh, some sensors, and uh, we have different ideas from different countries to create things, uh, wearables, using uh, Arduino, and also uh, try to introduce uh, augmented reality. Uh, it's not uh, extensive. I obtain uh, money from Erasmus Plus projects, and you can buy uh, uh, or from your uh, school or from uh, the association of uh, fathers and mothers of your school, uh, the parents' association. You can obtain money, and uh, it's not uh, expensive. You can build your own 
uh, Arduino or your clones, from, or you can create from components. It's not expensive, and you can buy, and you can try to create uh, things. These are uh, the, I am using more Arduino than, than Raspberry Pi, uh, but uh, now I am reusing also Raspberry Pi too. And it's very, uh, you can go to the official website, raspberrypi.org, or this uh, website, arduino.cc, processing.org, on my website to look for example created by, created by the students. No, so now it's time for questions. Uh, thank so, you very much, Francisco, for this interesting session. Thank you to you for attending. We have some time for questions, and you can write them in the chat. Yes, of course. So we can read them and, and answer. So I don't know if the, if the attendants know a little bit about open hardware. Uh, I know that some of them know, but as I know some of them attending, but please ask me what you want. There were some comments before as well uh, about some of, some participants that are very interesting. They have not yet worked with these technologies, but they were here exactly for their interest. Uh, someone is asking if we, the, your PowerPoint will be available. We can send it uh, through the follow-up email we usually send after the webinar, if possible. No or No problem, absolutely. So, so we will send a follow-up email uh, in the coming days, and we will include uh, the presentation uh, from Francisco Perez in, um, in the email. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat. We still have time. Um, in the meantime, I, I can ask you a question on my own. Um, I think it would be interesting to know with students or which age you suggest to, to do this activity, to use this uh, technology. In fact, I am starting with this year, I am starting, and last year, I am starting with 12 year old, but uh, with 12 year old, I start with very simple problem, uh, software, just with App Inventor and uh, Arduino uh, software, but using very simple um, uh, blinking LEDs and a sensor of temperature, you can start with 12 years old with students and they understand what you are doing. You have the possibility to have uh, a small groups of students, you can work with them starting with 12 years. And the most complex ones you can do with uh, older students. The more, uh, but uh, you, you can start with 12 years old, I think and even younger. Thank you. Um, we have another couple of questions coming from the chat. Um, the participant is asking uh, where all these tutorial videos mentioned can be found? The video uh, I think. In the, my, my website is, uh, is uh, now in this last slide, slide technologies that without, without age, technologies without age, dot net. So technology is writing without uh, letter H. Okay, thank you very much. And I see another question um, from Tony. Uh, how many gas detectors have you tested? I test of the MQ series. That is uh, a series that uh, MQ2, MQ, MQ7, there are uh, of methane, or uh, CO, of CO2, of uh, that we call, one is called smoke, that is a mixture of, uh, of gases. There are several to be bought by, for less than five euros. The more expensive one is the CO2, but the others of methane, of CO, you can buy only for five euros each one. Real viability is a good question. Uh, you need to compare uh, with other, we don't make comparisons with other uh, sensors. Uh, uh, what we observe uh, is, for example, changing the speed of the, of the car, the revolutions per minute. The more smoke you have, the more increase you have. Uh, 
but the problem that we have uh, with this uh, with this um, creation with uh, these sensors is a, a very high consu consumption of a ba uh, battery. Battery consumption is very high. I don't know why it, uh, for this type of sensor consumes a lot of uh, battery or my design is not quite uh, good. I don't know why, but uh, the problem I have, I am facing, is the consumption of batteries. No, sir, I don't know if you have more questions. We can uh, wait a few minutes more. We have still time. Um, I was thinking maybe you have some final tip or suggestion for teacher on how to get started with such project in the classrooms um, as you, uh, in your experience. I think that people uh, or some teachers are afraid of, uh, of these technologies. Uh, at the beginning, uh, people think that it could be di very difficult to start with, but uh, if you start working with that, uh, you will see that it's not that difficult, that uh, programming language is not, if you know a little bit of programming, you will see that it's very easy. And if you don't know absolutely nothing about programming, and if you uh, uh, buy some uh, electronic board of this type, for example, an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or whatever you want to buy, you can start programming and you will see with the example that you have how easy it is to start work. And the students really appreciate uh, uh, because they can, they can see that uh, how things are working inside. How if you change the code, the, uh, for example, you are blinking a LED and you can do an SO, SOS code. For example, in first of SO, that is the K7, K7 level, that means 12 years students, only to, or students 12 years, I teach them how to switch on and off a light, the blinking example. And then I ask them, please, now modify the code and create an SOS message. And the only thing that they need to, um, to create is the code, and they can observe that uh, that, uh, let that, um, that that electronic light that is switching on and off one second, they can modify to make an SOS uh, uh, message. And they understand um, uh, uh, programming, and they understand for, from a, with physical objects, and if they understand with physical objects, they understand better, I think. I don't know if you have more questions. Thank you. There, there is a comment and another question, uh, other two questions in the chat. Yes. The, first, the comment is uh, about the fact that uh, maybe building an Arduino is very interesting uh, to understand the hardware. Yes. Then another question is, uh, would you suggest to start with Arduino or with Raspberry Pi? Uh, you can do, uh, I, I, um, both are good platforms. Um, the way of things that you are doing with one and the other, you can do similar things with both. And there are uh, many uh, available uh, codes. Uh, both are uh, quite good to start with. Uh, what I think is Arduino, usually Ardu for Arduino, you use uh, the Arduino programming language. And for Raspberry Pi, you usually use Python. And, uh, but you can use different programming languages with both. For example, now it's possible to program uh, with uh, near every uh, programming languages in any platform. But you, usually you use Python, Python for Raspberry Pi and Arduino for um, Arduino programming language for Arduino. But for example, you can use processing programming language that is the software that I recommend the most because I think it's, the, it's not well known, processing. And it's a language created for artists that mean people that don't like programming, that usually uh, they are afraid of programming, 
And for artists, they are using processing because it's very simple to program. And processing programming language is, is compatible with both. From, uh, for, for processing, you can use Raspberry Pi 2 or Arduino. Both are very interesting to use. So I recommend you. both. There is another question, and um, it's uh, about uh, the number of students uh, suitable to work uh, with each board. Uh, if you, the less, if you, you uh, the less the better. The lesser the better. If you have very uh, small amount of students, it's better, because in big groups uh, you can work, of course. But uh, if you t can try to have uh, small groups with only two or three students, you can work better with two or three students. But if you have few Arduinos, you can wor work in bigger groups. I am very lucky because I have a lot of Arduinos because uh, uh, we have money for, from, from projects, from European projects or from the school or from the parents' associations, you can try to obtain money and to have as many. Uh, if you have uh, one computer, one Arduino, one student, is the perfect situation. And you can try to find money from parents' associations, from European projects, from your school management. Uh, but you can start working in groups if you, have, if you don't have money enough. But I, I, uh, I think that the, if you start working with that, you will continue working with that we, because the students really appreciate uh, that uh, this sort of work. Thank you. Um, we don't have any other questions on the, in the chat at the moment. We have some more minutes if you like to make some final remarks or give uh, some more suggestion? Uh, my, my one and only suggestion is to give uh, open hardware a try. So give the possibility to, uh, to open hardware to buy in the school an Arduino One or another platform, a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone or whatever you want to buy. But please buy an uh, One. Work at home and you will see how easy it is to work with that. Look how many examples you have on internet and also inside the software. Look at uh, very interesting books that you have for free to download, uh, or a website that you have loads and loads of code, and you will see um, that it's not difficult to work with this open hardware, and you can create things and students like to create things. And uh, you can do a lot of different experiments and connect a lot of different sensors from scratch. You can start with, for example, with a sensor of temperature with a TMP36, uh, that is a very, TMP36 is very common temperature sensor, or DHP, uh, 55, I think, is a very common humidity sensor. You can start working with this uh, humidity or temperature sensor or uh, this light sensor that is even cheaper, the light-dependent resistor that is a sensor of light and with uh, uh, electronic lights. And you can try to 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 buy this, this component. There are also some kits that you have all the electronic components with the, uh, with the Raspberry Pi or with the Arduino, and it's prepared with experiments, and you have everything in, inside a kit. You have a kit with the, with the open hardware and the electronic components, and if you, can, if you prefer, you can start with a kit if you uh, don't want or you have no experience with electronics. I don't know. That's my final remarks. Thank you very much. Um, we have several comments thanking you for the very good presentation, very interesting presentation. And I think uh, we already answered all the questions. 
So thank you very much for everybody for attending. You see, you have my email, uh, Perez at uv.edu, and I will try to answer every question that is sent there. Uh, I would like to thank you as well, everybody, for participating in this Scientix webinar. For me, and on behalf of Scientix and European School Net, and my colleagues and Adina are here with me. And I would like also to um, tell you that the next webinar of this series is scheduled on Monday 30, and it will be about cloud-based systems in your STEM classroom. And all the information, as usual, you can find on the Scientix webinar uh, page on the Scientix portal. You can see the link in the chat now. Thank you, and I hope to see you at the upcoming events in Scientix. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Francisco.